Hey guys, welcome to Machine Design. Pardon my shitty handwriting, but let's get right into it. So I'm going to do an overview of mechanical engineering design. So things you want to consider when you're designing stuff. Safety. You don't want to get people injured while using your uh, invention, your design. You don't want the manufacturers to get injured. You gotta always keep safety in mind because the end goal is to make it something that uh, can benefit humanity and not damage humanity. Unless you're making like a weapon. <laughs> then you, I guess you don't want a safe weapon. Safe for the user at least, not for the, uh, the victim. Anyways. Two would be need to use imagination and ingenuity. So it's a it's a creative process. It's very technical, but it's like the creative side of the technical aspect. Like you gotta have the technical side of it down pat. Like it a there's there's a range. There's only so much you can do with the uh, engineering, but like there's only so many. There's there's rules. You can't like go outside the rules, but within the rules, you have essentially infinite creativity, and that's where the the fun begins. But it takes a long time to learn all the rules properly. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, my, my cat has just come on the table. I'm gonna tell him to fuck off. Fuck off, kitty. You're gonna fuck off. Sorry about that. Not now, kitty. I'll see you later. No, bad kitty. Bad kitty. Later. Okay, anyways. Oh, you need to think of the life cycle. <laughs> I like I just transitioned right out of the life cycle of the product. So, uh, what kind of situations can you reasonably develop during the various stages of manufacturing, transporting, storing, installing, using, servicing, and eventually throwing out? Like, think of it like from start to finish. Like, what's uh, going to happen to the product? So, like, keep in mind, like, you have to like build the product so it can't be all extremely complex and impossible to build. Like you might need like you might lose all your profit if it's extremely difficult to build. Um, I'm gonna hammer back on safety again. So like let's say you have like uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a forge. Like you have a you have A hammer going down. This is a hammer going down with let's say like 100 kilonewton force. This is like a steel bar. This is like your uh, just, you know, platform. This is attached to the ground. For the ground, you usually use uh, hatching like this. Sorry, it looks like shit right there. But anyways, it would it would normally look like this. But uh, this is my monstrosity of it right there. Uh, you're gonna want to have like, here's your guy over here. It's happy. He's got a top hat on. He's a fancy man. And you wanna, well, you want the button to be like right here. You know, you want you want it to be like a good three to four meters away. Like it, it, that's like a built-in safety precaution. Like the thing won't work unless you're standing this far away. Or, and if you have like multiple people working on it, you want to have a guy, like a gate maybe around it that will have to be closed for the button to work. Like something like that. So it's just safety precautions because you don't want people to lose their hands or arms and shit. Because then you got to buy a new worker. That's no fun. Oh, and the guy has no arm. That's probably uh, also bad. Uh, okay, anyways, documentation. You want to have like very uh, good documentation of your product. That's just kind of the, in my opinion, one of the more annoying parts. Um, like every, you need to like the performance range, like product performance range. Like let's say you can operate this product between like, uh, 
like zero to five thousand RPM, like don't exceed five thousand RPM. You can always build that in, but like maybe someone wants to overclock or like over like over uh, go over what you recommend and they, they just disable your safety built in safety features that would stop it at five thousand and be like, no, don't do this. Um, or you can say like if you modify the product, they'll void. Um, we don't take responsibility for that. You know, it's, you want to avoid getting sued, and uh, you want to talk about the quality, like, uh, like, uh, i.e., no, like, lead, mercury, heavy metals, which sometimes are essential in your build or your design, but uh, you want to like. Communicate that. Um, you want to consider uh, society. So let, let, how will your how will your design fit into society? And it will that actually benefit society, not not so much for uh, the ethical reasons, but like eth ethics are good. Like I doubt anyone of you guys is gonna wanna make like a doomsday device or anything, so uh, I'm ruling that out. But uh, like, will will society actually want your product? It's more for your own personal success. Like, will you actually make something that's worthwhile? Will it actually benefit the world? In this, i.e., will they want to pull out their wallets and buy it? Do they, is it necessary for society? Like, will it benefit it to the point where they feel the need that they want to purchase it and give you their money and you make, you succeed? Because, you know, engineering is fun, but you want that money. Not, not only for, like, money's sake, but, you know, usually money is a signal that you're doing the right thing. Never feel bad about making money. Um, other things you want to look into are reliability, because as you go from like first year engineering to like the final years, it's more you're just taking more and more into consideration. Like first, it's like you have it's like infinitely rigid beam that like can never break. It like you put it, you push down on it, the moment's perfectly transported to the other side. But that's, that's not real life. It's, everything's bending. Everything can move. Everything has like a certain quality. Like steel has to be made. Like every beam is different. You have to have like quality control. Make sure it's up to standards. Like test and all that. When then another field that comes up a lot is reliability. Like let's say this is kind of like putting the probability into account. Let's say you have like a beam. My drawing's pretty fucking bad right now. Maybe I should swear less for these videos. Um, okay, let's say you're putting like a force of like a thousand kilonewtons and you're putting a moment of like 10 kilonewton meters right here. And let's say uh, the probability of failure at this loading is like I mean, it'll be like e to the negative uh, like a thousand. I don't know if this is actually an accurate way, but it's something like that. It'd be like an equation showing like this is not a not a good example, but you know, a good equation, but just for just for example. I wish I had a better one. I'm kind of just freestyling this for the first lecture. Uh, so yeah, like there's going to be like a, let's say after 10 hours goes by, probability is like 1 in a million. After a thousand hours goes by, probability is maybe 1 in 10. After like, so you want to, like you don't want, let's say you have this beam in service for a thousand hours. Now you now have a 1 in 10 chance it's going to fail based on the random equation I gave. And uh. So maybe you wanted to only fail, have a one in ten thousand chance of failing. So you had to look at the 
you need to find out how to make your beam either stronger or have a, like a schedule where you phase the new beams in every at a certain periodic period of time. That, that's reliability. And then everyone knows this one, uh, systems of units. It's like you don't, don't mix up SI and Imperial. Always be very clear which system of units, that's like the most common mistake you can make and it fucks everything up. And then, so here's the, the tools that you're going to use. The tools to solve uh, machine component problems are statics and dynamics. Mechanics of materials. Hopefully you can read uh, this. I'll try to zoom in maybe. Um, like formulas. Then you have uh, some principles like conservation of mass and con Conservation of energy. My bold E for energy. This is my shorthand for conservation. Uh, work plus energy. Uh, like power. Like these are all the things you're gonna have to take into account for designing machines. And uh, let's do like a practice problem now just for review. Um, find one here. These questions are all kind of like uh, wishy-washy ones. All right, here's a here's a question. Am I setting my setup here? Is still fucking ghetto. I'll show you it after. All right. So, so you have a Question 1.43 from this book I'm using here. You have a block with the weight being 3,000 pounds sliding on a flat surface. So let's draw that. This is a flat surface. So it's a uh, Weight equals so vector three thousand pounds. We're using imperial, huh? Uh, initial velocity is eighty-eight feet per second. Coefficient of friction equals zero point seven. So what is the friction force? So we know friction force equals mu times the normal force, which is equal to the weight in this case. Because uh, so F we do sum of forces in let's say this is y, this is x, and y is equal to zero since it's actually equal to m a y, but since it's not accelerating in the y, this is equal to zero. And then uh, so this is going to be zero equals the weight, which is going down, plus normal force, because this is your fn right here. It's the force that's kind of preventing it from falling down to nothing. So now we have weight equals negative Fn. Since weight is negative 3,000, Fn equals 3,000 pounds. It's in the upwards direction. Cool. So now we have 0.7 times 3,000 equals 2,100 pounds. That's qu question A was what's the friction force? 
This is going to be in this direction because the, mo the movement's going this way, so the friction force is going that way. And how long does it take for the block to come to rest? Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. This is a uh, work. Uh, what does this do? Force equals MA. So 2100 pounds of force equals 3000 pounds times A. A is going to equal 0 0.7 what is it, foot per second squared. And uh, so Uh, v final minus V original over time is equal to A if A is constant, which it is. So uh, V O final is zero. So the time is going to equal. As the acceleration is in this direction, by the way. Um, because the force is in this direction. It's pound force is a mass, so yeah. Uh, the time will be negative 88 feet per second divided by negative 0 0.7. So, let me put my calculator here. Approximately 125.7 seconds. I think that's correct. So yeah, that's lecture one and a preliminary machine design stuff there. You can check the link in the description for where to buy this textbook. You can find the link where to buy uh, calculator really cheap, buy some really good pencils, and uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed the video, shared it. You can check out my website, www.grandmastersuccess.com. It's written in the uh, description below. Um, some other websites too you can visit. If you would like to donate, you can check out the link below as well. You can follow me on Twitch at www.twitch.com forward slash moopcow where I stream music lessons, music performances, video game comment, commentary, and uh, like, it's pretty funny. I'm not, I'm not very funny when I film engineering videos, or I, I don't think I am at least, but you know, during the gaming, you know, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny at times. Um, yeah, so if you, if you think so at least, I think it's funny. Feel free to check that out. You can follow me on Facebook at my page is Moop uh, Solid Moop for my music. You can follow me at uh, my other page is Grandmaster Success on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I'm just plugging everything. I have. Follow me on Twitter at uh, at Grandmaster Success. I think. Anyways, yeah, you can follow my mom home from the grocery store, and she'll bake you a pie. Uh, yeah, so like, subscribe, comment, share, turn notifications on, and if you like, donate button below. Enjoy lecture two.